Hey YouTubers, welcome back. This is video number 75 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, November 18th, 2011. And welcome back everybody. I've been really busy this week. I haven't had a chance to answer too many questions because I've been busy painting the shop. I've got a friend of mine coming in to help me as well. So it's really taken up a lot of my time. I can't wait till it's done because you just don't realize how much time it takes to do small renovations like that. So if you send questions and I haven't gotten back to them, maybe you can search through my videos on my channel page to see if there is a video that's related to your question. My first question today is one I often get and it's in regards to when people take off the clutch cover on their chainsaw, then when they go to put it back on, it just won't go back on and they're wondering why. Well, I'm going to show you the most common thing that happens when people take the clutch cover off and they can't put it back on. So people take the cover off, some of them the chain brake is built onto the chainsaw so you would not have to worry about this problem that I'm explaining today. So what happens sometimes is people accidentally get this pushed to the front like that and that activates the chain brake, it squeezes the spring over here and when you go to put it on it just won't go. And as you can see the spring is tightened and it will not allow the spring to go around the clutch when you go to put the cover back on, that's why you cannot put it back. So always sure that the handle is pulled back toward you and this will allow the spring to expand and go around the clutch when you put the cover back on. And as you can see there the spring has expanded and when I go to put it back on it'll fit perfectly. The next question I got from a YouTuber is how do I get the shear pins off my snowblower if they're seized into the shaft? On this snowblower the pins not seized in the shaft but what probably happened to this YouTuber is he went to take off the pin, started taking the nut off and the bolt broke so it was shaved evenly with the shaft and then when he tried to get it off it's jammed in there from the rust. Well what I usually use for this is a roll pin punch the same size as the shear pin. In most cases it's a quarter inch or five sixteenths then grab your hammer and with the nut off of course and the pin seized into the shaft just insert the roll pin punch on top of the broken shear pin and then hammer it out and it should go right through. Now after trying this method if you still cannot get it off because it's seized on there so badly I usually have to heat it up red hot with matte gas or if you have an acetylene torch that's even better heat it up till it's red hot and then she'll come out for sure. The trick is to get that metal red hot and then you're guaranteed that that pin's going to come out. And my next question a YouTuber has a leaf blower like this and he's wondering why the primer doesn't fill up with gas when he pushes on it. As you can see there's already a little bit of gas in that one and when I push it it usually fills up like this. Now he's wondering why that's not happening. What I've seen in the past that may cause a primer bulb not to fill up with gas is that the diaphragms in the carb were shot. Especially the pump diaphragm. That's the one with the two little tabs on it. And just to show you this is what I mean, the two little tabs here. Sometimes they go awry and they don't work anymore and they cause the primer ball not to fill up. It's really rare that I see this but I have. I've also seen people take their carbs apart and not put the diaphragms back in properly. For example when they put this diaphragm back on they didn't put it in the proper sequence. For example this should be flat on the carburetor body and then this go on top. So some people I've seen they've mixed them up and then the primer bulb wouldn't work. It took me a while to figure it out because I assumed if they put a carb kit in it, it was put in properly. Another thing you may want to check are the fuel lines that go from the carb to the fuel tank. You also want to make sure that the primer bulb is in good condition, that it's not all cracked and you want to make sure that when you push it, it comes back on its own. If it does not come back on its own, just replace it. They're cheap to replace, they're around five bucks and it can save you a lot of trouble. And here's the next question I got. It's regarding the octane in your gas. Does it matter what gas octane I use in small engines, especially two cycle engines? Well, this is a topic that's open for discussion, meaning a lot of people may have different opinions on this. What I do for myself is I use the fuel with the highest octane. In that case, it'll be 91 or 94. I do find that the fuel with the highest octane in it will last much longer on the shelf, meaning you don't have to worry about it going bad as quickly. Obviously if you have more octane in your fuel it's going to be more flammable, it's going to ignite much easier inside your engine. I usually don't see much difference in my four cycle engines and when I run my generator I don't always want to put the highest octane just in case it would overheat. But when it comes to like my chainsaws and trimmers which are all two cycle engines I do find that they run much better with the highest octane fuel. 
So the bottom line is yes, I do find that it matters what the level of the octane in your fuel is for your two cycle engines. And I've even read that some power equipment manufacturers recommend that people use high octane fuel in their equipment. And if you're not sure what to use in your power equipment, just check the owner's manual or contact the company of the equipment you have and ask them what do they recommend because some may recommend the highest octane and some may not. So always do your homework and make sure you're using the correct fuel for your equipment. Before I end off the video today, some people have asked me how can I be notified each time you upload a video. Well, first of all, if you have a username on YouTube, each time you log into your account, your homepage on YouTube will show all the videos of your subscriptions. Well, there's a small option I'm going to show you that you can check. And if you do this, you're going to be emailed each time I upload a new video. Here's what it would look like when you watch one of my videos. This is my French channel, by the way. And I've subscribed to it from my English channel. Now where it says subscribed, just reach in, click here, and you'll see a drop down menu. And if you go and check mark this, where it says also email me for each new upload, you're going to be notified by email, which is convenient. Then you're sure you're never going to miss a video. So thanks for watching. I want to thank all my viewers. I want to welcome all the new subscribers. I appreciate you watching my videos. Hopefully you guys have learned a few tips today and make sure to come back next Friday and have a great weekend.